close your eyes and lift your hands towards heaven just for a moment. Oh, God is in this place. And God is beckoning and he's wooing and he's speaking by his spirit. He's trying to save. He's trying to rescue. He's trying to redeem his bride from the prostitution, the harlotry it's been involved in. From the lies and the deceptions of the dirt world that has turned the ability of God into a license to do whatever you want. You understand when you got born again, the Bible says he became the Lord of your heart. He became the master of your life. He wants control of every part of you. I'm telling you about the authority of the spirit of the living God. God wants to be Lord or he's not Lord at all. He wants you from top to bottom. He'll not share you with another. All the lies we've been taught and told by the stretching and the distorting of the truth that's so apparent. Let God come upon you and begin to change you from the inside out before it's too late. Save yourself from this outright generation. Perverted, wicked society. Look what it says, please. In the book of Acts, chapter 2. I'm not bringing to you a message I received from man. I did not receive this doctrine from the flesh, but I received it from the Spirit as I simply looked in the Word. And all who really hunger after righteousness, for the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, His holiness, His purity. And God will give it to you. See, God is only giving holiness to those who are seeking first the kingdom. I want you to notice what as Peter began to preach by the Spirit of God, he begins to finish up his sermon in verse 36 of chapter 2. And therefore let all the house of Israel know assertively that God has made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. And verse 37, the power of God was so evident that it says, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. The word prick means to be cut asunder like a meat cleaver. Stung arrow entering in cut them to the quick their hearts were filled with amazing sorrow by the spirit of God they saw they crucified their Messiah they hung the prince of peace and the Lord of Lords upon that tree they saw that because of their sins that God had to die and shed his blood for them the holy righteous one who even angels can't look upon who the Bible says stretches the heavens by his wisdom and his understanding and he cloaks the heaven with blackness and sackcloth whose very touch melts the mountains his feet the Bible says will cleave the mountains in twain and they'll melt like wax and fire like a river fall and now they see that they've crucified the one who loved them above all else and so now their heart is struck it's pierced it's wounded and I believe if we you and I would have been there and we'd have seen the thousands and thousands gathered together you would have heard them weep with such wailings you'd almost had to cover your ears and notice what these men cried out to Peter and to the rest of the apostles madam brethren what shall we do for they were convicted of their wickedness because God is pure holiness and there's no sin in them. My friends, you cannot take your sin with you. You cannot have two masters. You cling to mammon. You cling to the flesh. You cling to the world that's going to drag you to hell with the devil. And the day will come when you might mock and you might even say even now that this man isn't speaking the truth. That's nothing but bondage. But the day will come when the trumpet will sound and the great and the small of all nations will stand before his presence. And the goat will be on the right and the sheep on the left and you'll find yourself on the wrong side. And the angels will be dispatched to drop you into the bottomless pit. And then you'll weep and you'll cry and you'll say all oh, these fancy preachers are wrong. I wish to God I would have listened to that little man on the 21st of March when I've been sent with a message to warn you of coming judgment
Do you not think the nature of God inside of us is more than a match for the stinking filthy lust of the flesh and the cares of life and the deceitfulness of riches? Will you forsake your eternal reward for a bowl of porridge that will never satisfy for the here and now which is about to pass away with a consuming fire? Will we deny our only Lord and Savior who poured out his best and gave us all for our redemption to tread afresh upon his precious blood and spit in his face and say what you did was insufficient? Heaven forbid! What a time of rejoicing there will be when those who truly love the Master respond to his beckoning cry and he says, come up hither and you can live a life that's above the lies. You don't have to have any darkness inside. You can live a holy, pure, clean life that the devils would tremble. For at the coming in of the master, they did not cry out, Oh, we know who you are, a great powerful one, or great mighty faith one, or great mighty this. He said, We know who you are, the Holy One of Israel. The demons did not cry out when Peter or Paul or James came by because of the excellence of the preaching or because of the knowledge they had, but they cried out because the Holy Ghost was on them. And it struck fear in their heart because the presence of God, it's like the reminder of the coming judgment. For they know their days are numbered. It's about over. If it was short in the days of Paul and Peter, then what is it that we have even now but seconds to live, to perform his perfect will? Oh. Can you not perceive and can you not hear what the Spirit is saying to the bride? Come and make yourself ready. Get your wedding dress on. Oh, we know ladies, and we'll talk about it tonight. And matter of fact, I, I will just warn you because tonight is going to be kind of frightful because the Spirit of God laid a message upon my heart about the church is a harlot. But he's saying to the bride, like a natural bride, before she gets married, she might be wearing her dungarees and a natural, but then she puts herself into a closet and she locks herself away and she begins to perfume and wash and purify and scrub and work and make herself holy. And then she puts on that white garment. God provides that. And when the wedding march starts to play, she puts her arm into the arm of her father and now be Abba God. And she begins to march down the aisle.